Welcome. Let's take a look at a charge capacitor. So we have a plate with positive Q, a plate with negative Q. And we're going to wire them up but with a switch so that when we flip the switch, we will be able to discharge the capacitor and each plate will have right, zero charge eventually. So what we can say is we can talk about the charge of each plate of the capacitor as a whole. We can say that the charge at time equals zero is the maximum charge it will have. And then after we flip it, then the charge at a much, much later time will be zero. In reality, right, this will discharge almost instantaneously. But if we're talking about reality, we might as well say that, hey, in reality, actual wires that would use to connect and disconnect these two should have some amount of resistance. So now what's saying is that discharging the capacitor will take some time. But we still have that the charge at zero is going to be maximum. The charge at infinity is going to be zero. So we still have Q of t equals zero equals Q max. Q of t equals infinity equals zero. So what can we do with this then? is we could take a look at this as a loop rule. We can draw a Kirchhoff's loop rule of this. And if we do that, then we have, right, our loop rule. So the voltage of our capacitor is going to be negative Q over C. And the voltage of our resistor is going to be negative R times I. And these are the only two elements when the flip is switched. And so this would be equal to 0. Now, our last thing is that the current is defined as the change in charge over the change in time. So now I can write this as negative Q over C minus r times dq dt equals zero. And I can solve for dq dt, so bringing this over and then dividing by r. So I'd get dq dt equals negative one over rc times q. And really, we might want to put, right, as a function of time, as a function of time. Well. What's going on with this? We are saying that the rate of change of charge is related to the charge itself. So going back to here, we can look at the charge as a function of time. We know that at time 0, it's going to be at Q max. We know that at some infinite time, it's going to start approaching being very, very close to 0. And then what we can see is we can see the dq dt, the slope of this curve, is going to be negative, And it's going to be based on how much charge we have. So if I have a lot of charge, it's going to be a very large negative slope. Here, though, I don't have very much charge, so I'm going to have a very close to zero slope. And so if we kind of continue this along, we'll keep getting something looking in this way. That as our charge decreases, the slope of how it would decrease goes down and down and down. This is a very interesting branch of mathematics called differential equations, in which the rate of change of something depends upon its initial population. Our economy, 
our population, any other animal population, COVID, uh, other things are differential equations in which their growth depends upon the population at that time. So in order to solve RC circuits, in order to solve other circuits from this week, we're going to need to delve into differential equations, but we'll do that in another video now that we know that we need to do so.